And we're launching on you know, the Epic Game Store, Steam, on our website, um, Hyperplay, Ultra.io. Uh, it's a massive kind of culmination of the last four years. So we started developing the game early 2019. So over the last couple of years, obviously when you know, Blowfish became you know, part of Animoca Group, um, we've been able to leverage and you know, utilize all the support there from, from Animoca. Uh, and we've been building Phantom Galaxies into what you know we envision as being one of the you know, number one or you know one of the top Web three games in in the world. We are one of the you know, the, the top games in the space when it comes to at least like traditional game quality, which is what uh, Blowfish Studios and you know Phantom Galaxies and myself have have been aiming for. Um, you know we are you know we're game first, so we want Phantom Galaxies the game to speak for itself. Uh, and to really bring in the you know, engaged um, gamers, both from you know Web three and people that aren't so Web three native yet, um, so from the traditional gamers, um, but you know, that's that's the goal for for Phantom Galaxies. And we are back. Welcome once again to the Founder Insights Podcast by Animoca Brands. I'm Rich Robinson, entrepreneur in residence at Animoca Brands. And today, Kaboom Town, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I was with Ben just recently in Hong Kong at Hong Kong Fintech Week, and we talked about the big upcoming early access to Phantom Galaxies, which is being developed by Blowfish Studios, which has been co-founded by the man himself, the man of the hour, Ben Lee, everybody. Put your hands together. Don't care if you're driving or in the bathroom. Doesn't matter. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Rich. Good to be here. And yeah, it's uh, good to see you again. Just a couple of weeks later. <laughs> you as well. It was um, a pretty terrific week in Hong Kong the mothership of Animoca Brands, and I would contend one of the epicenters of Web3 and DeFi globally. And you could feel the buzz. If it, that was the bear market, then strap in kitties for, for the bull. And uh, not only was it terrific to see you in person, but the rest of your most excellent team. I mean, I can't emphasize how much the world-class, amazing nature of Blowfish Studios and what you guys are bringing to the multiverse with Phantom Galaxies. And please, please tell us about this AAA RPG ASAP or vous play SVP. Thank you. Oh, cool. No, thanks, Richard. I mean, I guess the easiest, easiest way to explain or to pitch Phantom Galaxies is that, you know, the, the player fantasy is... You know, transforming robots in space, shooting other robots and spaceships. I mean, you know, getting to, to live that out. Um, you probably see from from behind me. I guess you know, growing up, I yeah, I watched a lot of you know, G one Transformers, uh, Robotech, and Macross, and they're the they're the two kind of biggest like influences into into Phantom Galaxies. Um, but yeah, it's it was. Amazing in Hong Kong that week, like you said, with Hong Kong FinTech Week, and then you had Hate Fest. I think Hong Kong's become this kind of yeah massive um, Web three epicenter, like you said, for for the, the region. So uh, really good to see the you know, the government and uh, the environment being you know, really really receptive to it. And I think everybody is receptive, but they're also receptive. Everybody's like, "Where is it? Where's Web three? Like, show it to me. Show me something." that's going to really blow my socks off, not necessarily just grinding axes. I want to see a real game. And it takes years and years and years to do that. But fortunately, behind the scenes, you guys have been plugging away for years and you have more than a decade of experience. So tell us about the early access that's coming up tomorrow. Yeah, no, so <clears throat> yes, early access for Phantom Galaxy is launching tomorrow in bit about 28 hours now we're looking at. Uh, we're launching on you know, the Epic Game Store, Steam, on our website, um, 
Hyperplay, Ultra.io. Uh, it's a massive kind of combination of the last four years. So we started developing the game early 2019. It was a you know, smaller team than it is now. Uh, it's also a different kind of game than it is now in that it was a, it had a smaller scope. So over the last couple of years, obviously when you know, Blowfish became you know, part of Animoca Group, um, we've been able to leverage and you know, utilize all the support there from, from Animoca. Uh, and we've been building Phantom Galaxies into what you know, we envision as being one of the you know, number one or you know, one of the top Web3 games in, in the world. And I think you, you know, it'll be plain to see once we launch tomorrow and start that, that journey for early access. Uh, that we are one of the, you know, the the top games in the space when it comes to at least like traditional game quality, which is what uh, Blowfish Studios and you know Phantom Galaxy and myself have have been aiming for. Um, you know we are you know we're game first, so we want Phantom Galaxy as the game to speak for itself uh, and to really bring in the you know, engaged um, gamers, both from you know Web three and people that aren't so Web three native yet. Um, so from the traditional gamers, um, but, you know, we, that's that's the goal for, for Phantom Galaxies. Fantastic. I just want to clarify, tomorrow is Wednesday, October 15th, but we're going to be launching this podcast on Friday. Uh, no, sorry, November, November 17th, November 15th, November 17th. So it'll be the day before yesterday <laughs> rather than tomorrow, if you can wrap your head around that. But hey, uh, in uh, the multiverse, metaverse you can be anything, including a time traveler. So, um, yeah, and I love the background there. I mean, it's just literally like a manifestation of your essence that you've created in the background. See this this mecha here? That's actually uh, a statue of one of our mechs from the game from Phantom Galaxies. How, how did you how did you get that pulled together? Yeah, like we were working with a studio um, that we've been working with. They, they do some of our trailers, cinematic trailers, but they also have a a model making department or statue you know, figurine making department. Amazing. So it took many, many months to get it done, but it's all, you know, it's built. We've got another one where we've got as well. So um, we were looking at making them into, you know, very limited edition kind of um, physical, um, physical merch. So, but no, it's, it's really cool to see the, you know, see your, see our game come to life in the, in the physical world as well. Mm, inner cookie monster say me want, I need to set up a shelf like that as well too. Wow. So what can people expect tomorrow, day before yesterday, or with the early access? Yeah, yeah. So for us, with, with early access for Phantom Galaxies, it's our <clears throat> it's free to play. So tradition, like up to this point, without through our alpha and our beta, we've had, um, you know, it's been you need to, NFTs and tokens to, to get in there and play the game. And what this launched tomorrow or yesterday is, is a free to play element where people can now come in um, both web three and, and traditional gamers and play the game to experience, get the full experience of what it is to, to play phantom galaxies. Um, it's not going to be gated or blocked in any way. And people will be able to you know, play it's like, it's like a, an action of the third person shooter and action RPG kind of combined into one. So it's a bit of, you know, it's leveling up of both your avatar and your starfighter, which is what we call our, our, our mecha and our robots. So the starfighters, they'll level those up. Um, and what we do have though for, through the web three element is that, you know, we've been, you've, you can actually own and, and mint your own generative starfighters and pilots. Uh, and so they're NFTs and you can kind of play through using those. Um, and there's, uh, the idea is that as a free to play mechanism, you know, we want to get as many people into the game to, to you know, not be scared to give it a go and see whether they, you know, to see whether they like it or not. And then hopefully we, we onboard them through into, um, the, you know, the full experience of owning their own, um, starfighter, their own pilots. And then in the game, it's actually, it's loot based. So as people complete missions and quests, they'll get rewards and they'll get, you know, obviously items and you, if you, if you're lucky enough or complete the, the highest level quest, you'll get the, the kind of super legendary items and you'll be able to essentially mint those out and become NFTs. And so you'll have them in your wallet. Um, if you're a Web3 native and you can trade them or you can give them to, to other people, you can sell them. And that's kind of the main kind of, you know, 
Web3 and digital asset ownership element of the game. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this convergence of AAA gaming and on these traditional platforms of you know, Steam and Epic Game Store and also using this free-to-play paradigm that everybody is familiar with, but then sort of seamlessly, frictionlessly onboarding people onto Web3. It should be something that just feels elegant and, you know, a clear evolution and, and step up. Um, tell us about the the kind of thought behind that of like the, the Web2, Web3 bridging. Yeah, no, for sure. So we've been over the last two years designing and building out the whole kind of back end for, for how we, and, you know, we, we've planned this to go. Obviously, it, this has never been done before. So everything that we're doing is, you know, we've, we've gone in there and thought about it quite a lot and our design. Um, there's obviously some, some questions into how it will be received when it's you know, made public and you know, people are playing with it. But essentially, you know, we've got uh, kind of a, <clears throat> a portfolio or vault system where each, each player will have their account, like a traditional game account. And you can either, that, that account will either be um, accessible through, you know, your, your Steam login, your Epic Game Store login, or your wallet. And you kind of can, can link them that way. And then based on that, the seamless part is that people just get to essentially register their account, start playing the game. Um, you know, if they're coming in as free to play, that they're, they're, they're trying that out. Uh, they get, you know, they're playing alongside other players that might come in. They've already bought like their Starfighter and their Pilot as NFTs. They've got those in their wallet and they're coming in and playing directly with those. So that everyone's kind of playing alongside. It's, you know, it's got cooperative PVE and then it's got PVP. And so everybody, there's no, like we don't separate anybody. So you get, you get to play um, with, with everybody and you can be in part of the same organization or guild, uh, depend, depending on what kind of you know, account you've got. But yeah, you're playing along. And if you haven't, you've know, got uh, NFTs there that representing your Starfighters or, or avatars, you essentially can come into the website and you'll be able to go to your account essentially choose to to mint out um, your Starfighter or, or, or Pilot or be able to go buy them. When we launch for Early Access, the, the, the only option will be to go you know, mint and buy them from the website or OpenSea, you know, put them in your account and then play with those. But um, quite soon after we launch Early Access, we'll, we'll, we'll get the functionality to essentially take your free-to-play element or your character. And it's not so much about the character, but the time you spent on the, on the character or, or Starfighter and transfer that over to a, a minted asset. Um, and then, so then you'll be able to continue on, on that way. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the, the main thing there. But again, we've spent a lot of time and effort to make sure it is seamless. So, uh, you know, you don't need, you don't need a wallet to, to create an account and play. You just need to have, you sign up either by email or like I said, Epic Game Store on Steam and you're and, and playing there. Um, and then if you don't have a wallet, then we'll we have the functionality to, you know, to, to like, help you get one. We're, <clears throat> we are working with a couple of different like partners in, in the background to try to try to get that done. Um, but then, yeah, so really it's about trying to make sure people don't have to deal with, with all that and, you know, until they need to, uh, at, at the, you know, once they're fully engaged with the game, because, um, you know, as someone you know, as you become more engaged and have more invested in the game and really enjoying it, then you'll, you'll be prepared to kind of, you know, do a bit more to, to, um, if, if needed to, to move full, full web three. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, of course, world's largest community, 3.4 billion gamers, most of them in Asia, most of them very comfortable with virtual items and virtual currency and a lot of them crypto holders, but, you know, just as when free to play launched. I mean, if you did the in-app purchase or you just did the free to play ad supported version, then you were playing alongside each other. It didn't, didn't kind of matter. Right. And it, it should be that sort of like natural entry point. Um, and I think over time, just because most of the value has been accruing to the platform, to the game developer. And now the 
And then that's including all of the data, all of the time. Like you said, that time is valuable that people invest in a game. It's both something that gets them more connected to the game, but also makes them, you know, really valuable as a, as a contributor and to be able to reward them for that. I think in the future, people will really look at something and say, why aren't I able to have this on chain? Why aren't I able to, to own this because I'm putting so much time and treasure, uh, and actual money into this. Right. So, um, beautiful. I really look forward to that big launch and going to be playing with my boys who are, have a, a, a collection to rival yours in the background there and, uh, who love it and are, are all in. Tell us a little bit about the origin story, you know, Blowfish Studios, you know, fully acquired by, by Animoca Studios, by, by Animoca Brands, but, you know, 12 years old, the company and has a rich history and some great wins. Tell us about that journey, uh, up to, up to present day. Yeah. yeah it's, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a long story, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it as short as possible. So myself and my co-founder, Aaron Grove, we, um, <clears throat> back at university days, back in the you know, mid to late nineties, we were, we were you know, avid gamers and we used to, you know, game and we became friends that way. But on the side, we were, you know, while we were at uni, we were doing our own, our own hobbies. And part of that was game development. You know, I've always, I've always had a passion for game development ever since I was even like in primary school, just kind of love, love developing games and designing games. And so, um, with Aaron, we were, we were you know, I built my own game engine, so to speak, you know, this is before Unity and Unreal, it was before we had like 3D graphics engines. And so I learned how to do that. Um, and yeah, and he was doing all the art and animation and we, we kind of did that and then and, and I, I bet those games that you played in the 90s were like LAN parties. You probably had to like physically move your desktop, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, right. So that's like, that's some old school street cred right there too, right? So we weren't all on the internet, that's for sure. So it was way, oh, that was before the 90s. In the 90s, there was the internet there. But before that, it was, I did LAN parties when I was back at school and there was no, it was definitely no internet then. Um, but, but yeah, and so we kind of, we kind of went our own, way we're still friends but you know we were going down our own um careers uh i was in you know, software engineering uh still doing you know, still always doing game programming through in graphics programming aaron was doing you know, visual effects and kind of traveling the world and doing working for different visual effects houses um and then around 2008 kind of you know it was kind of the advent of unity and the iphone um was coming out and we essentially yeah, I was, I did like a kind of a test, a prototype and one, you know, I was over visiting Aaron one year and I showed him in 2008 and I said, look, this is what we're capable of doing just by ourselves now, just the two of us again. And from that, uh, you know, we decided to essentially give, give it a go. So we kind of quit our day jobs and started Bowfish um, full time end of 2010 and gave ourselves a year. And so essentially our third game in 2011, we launched at Siegecraft. Uh, it was, you know, it did, it was kind of had the right hooks and you know, visuals and gameplay that Apple kind of really were really liked it, and we were able to become part of the, the their yearly kind of Apple and iPhone and iOS launch. And so we were featured, went to number one US and globally, um, did over did over half a million US, you know in sales, gross sales. And so it was, that was a $1 game, right? So that was, that was pretty cool. Paid, paid game. And that kind of thing just kickstarted both studios from there. And over the years, uh, we, you know, we, we did work for hire as well for, for people, but then we're always working on our own games. But essentially over the years, we kind of, we've been very big on new technology and staying at the you know forefront or the leading edge, you know, leading edge of, of the game industry. So when, PlayStation and Xbox opened up uh, self-publishing. We, we, we released our games on PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Uh, then after that, you know, kind of the VR kind of you know, trend came up. So we you know, worked with Valve and got some VR games out there as well. Then the subscription services started. And so we, we had a great relationship with Apple since 2011. And we got a couple of games onto you know, Apple Arcade. So we were a launch partner there as well um and then that kind of led into you know animoca and uh we were making we'd already started you know with with phantom galaxies um making it a much bigger game uh, and we knew we needed a, a partner that would be able to help us you know 
and kind of bring that bring that to life. And so uh, it it was a kind of game that we you know was a really good fit for, for Web three gaming and um, obviously having items and gear driven and, and you know, all those characters. And so yeah, I got to know Yat, uh, who you know a great visionary for for Web three, and we were aligned on you know what where we thought you know, Web three was going, especially with gaming, right? It's like being gaming is just such a you know, it's a number one kind of entertainment industry now. Like you know, it's bigger than you know movies, TV, and music put together. So so it's huge. And so that's kind of how we got to the point where working with Anamoka and taking Phantom Galaxies and really taking using all our previous years' experience um, and our team and building up uh, what you can see now, um, which has been yeah, I think it's been a very exciting. Exciting journey, that's for sure, uh, for all of us. Very long journey, but yeah, very exciting. Beautiful hero's journey. Thank you for sharing. And uh, it's interesting that kind of common thread that I see for some successes it does really help when you know somebody from school or from work previously and you have that trust and you have understanding of each other's strengths and weaknesses and you can kind of support and um, also get supported by them. I think that's a, it's a really excellent foundation for, for any company. And also the fact that you guys really have this shared, you know, passion. I mean, oftentimes they, people say to follow your passion. I think it's kind of shitty advice, but the, the fact is that you guys really, uh, were able to weaponize it and, and do it, do it in a really successful way. And then, um, the other thing is, it's better to be, uh, you know, lucky uh, sometimes than to just be awesome because you got the perfect timing with that launch, and I think that really, it really gave you, you know, you need an unfair advantage, and that timing with Apple is just as beautiful, right? No, I was to say, yeah, I mean, as that's one thing we always recognize that no matter you know, you've got to be really hardworking and committed to to what you're what you're going after, but you always need that that sliver, sliver of luck as well. That's kind of what happens at the end there differentiates um, you know, when you, if you're you know, that you know, how successful you can be. So yeah, it's definitely you need everything all together to to really have a chance. Mm, but then you have the surface area of serendipity, surface area of luck, because you've you've put it out there into the universe and multiverse, and you said we're doing this, putting our flag in the sand, and then the universe conspires to help you make it happen. And when the universe is conspiring against you a little bit, then you can always do outsourcing. Right. So I think like that's actually it's not always like, hey, we launch a product and to the moon and like again and again and again. Right. You can you, you can kind of sharpen the axe by doing the outsourcing stuff. And I've had game companies where that was bread and butter for for many years. And it's a really great skill set to have to be able to, you know, get you to where you are now. Yeah, no, 100 percent. I mean, <clears throat> and then also like about four years ago, too. So we added also publishing. So we were actually became a game publisher where we would publish you know, other other developers games and so we had those three kind of areas where we had our own ip and self-publishing then we had you know the work for hire and then we were also like a, a indie game publisher where we'd be able to um take again take our our experience and our and our skills to help other game developers launch their games to the rest of the world beautiful yeah you know i love uh ray dalio he's the author of principles and he said you want to ask, you know, a wide range of people for advice, but you want to have a weighted believability index. So if somebody gives you advice, but they've never done it before, but somebody else has successfully done something three times, then you weight their advice much more. And gaming is the most complex consumer app that there is. And if you haven't done it, dev hell and, you know, live ops and optimization and rinse, repeat, you know, three times, you know, well, then you, you just haven't been battle tested enough to be able to do what you guys are doing now. And you've done it way more times than that. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited about, you know, this, uh, this upcoming launch. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yes. We've done it many more times than, than three times, but you know, every time I'll admit, you know, we, we've always got that same level of trepidation, I mean, anxiety and yeah, but, but also excitement around it. Um, you always know that you know, anything can kind of come out and, how, how however prepared you are, something will, will always always a new surprise, new mistakes, make new mistakes. But somebody told me once when I ran my first marathon, like the person that's winning this marathon is going to suffer pr 
probably even more than you are. Like there's not like the suffering doesn't go away. You just get faster and better and different level, right? It's just new next level. Better, better, better at handling the suffering or yes. ways to, ways to, yeah, the brain's very powerful, right? <laughs> yeah. And let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about the, the battle between your ear holes, not just the battle, you know, with the team or in the market. Um, t- tell, tell us about that, about some of the, the trials and tribulations and triumphs, some of the lessons learned along the way for you. Yeah. I mean, no, that's a great, <clears throat> great question. It's, it's obviously being doing this now with, with managing the, the company for, for so many years, been ups and downs like uh, over that time. And, and I think one of the things that you learn is that it's kind of, it's kind of sad in a way, but you, you kind of like, you really enjoy obviously the ups, but when you're, things are going so well, and the ups, you kind of now this is this, this voice in your head saying, you know, it's, it's not going to last forever. Uh, but so you've got to enjoy it. So that's one, one important thing. So first thing is know that what goes up, you know, must come down, what goes down must come up. You're going to have ups and downs. But second thing is also enjoy those ups, right? Just even though you're knowing that it, it is highly unlikely it's going to stay there forever, you should still take the time to enjoy it. Uh, and that's great. But if I may, I, I haven't known you that much, but I can tell you enjoy the downs. Like I just see your face and your smile and your attitude. Like you have excellent equanimity and just sense of humor, right? So I think that's just as important. Am, am I, am, am I, I, I speaking I out of turn I, or am I right? I don't know if enjoy is the right word. I would say that I've become, to, like I said, I know that there are downs. Uh, I will say, you know, going back to your question, one thing for me, um, you know, family has been, uh, you know, support from family for me has been what I've needed to get through some of those really, really low downs. Um, like I said, being forgiving of yourself as well. Like one thing to remember is that we're always, you know, all, at least myself, well, I'm always doing my best that I can. Can you, can you, can you peel that back though? Of like something, if you don't mind, like being more vulnerable of like, because it's easy when you're such a great achiever and you've done well to just beat the crap out of yourself. But then that's, that's, you know, not really beneficial either. Can you, can you give an example where you had to really just be like, okay, I, I forgive you, Ben. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's an e- there's easy ones where say for a, for a game launch, we've done so many game launches, right? So there might be a launch where going into it, um, uh, being the managing director or being you know, kind of the one with the most you know, final authority or whatever, you have to make decisions. And sometimes you'll make a decision that to kind of take a shortcut here or take a shortcut there or say, you know, prioritize something. And there's been times, yeah, where it's just been wrong and that's caused like pretty bad outcome for, for, for the product. And so you, you've, that, that's, you know, that's definitely one of the times there where you've, you've got to say, okay, well, um, just take that, take that. It's like, again, you, you didn't know, you know what I mean? You, you, you didn't have a crystal ball, so you had to make that decision and it wasn't right. Um, and it has, you know, repercussions on the business, but again, you can't, can't go back in time. You've got to pick yourself up. Might you know? Don't don't try to do it straight away. Give yourself at least a, a night or a, day, you know, a week to kind of you know, you know take 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 that hurt, take that pain, and, and get through it. Um, and you know, similar to to people. You know, our studio we started with two people. We are now over a hundred people. Um, we've gone up and down over those years. You know, so we've gone up and gone down, and so sometimes you also you might hire the wrong people and you know and, and that's on you right like you made that choice and but again you know, anytime you're, you're you're hiring people you don't have that much really to go on um and you, you make that decision and and i guess the absolute worst case is when that then actually hurts the rest of the the team and so you know that's where you've got to go okay well you know in hindsight i should have seen those red flags or or, or whatever for, for that but but again, you know, one of the things that, and I've always got, I've always had good advice from others as well, <clears throat> that, you know, the hard things you need to do when you, you generally, you should do the hard things sooner rather than later. And people do kind of procrastinate and put them off. Um, I guess for me, <clears throat> I would always say again, be forgiving of yourself. It's not easy, right, to do those hard things. And so, you know, if you do put them, push them off, then, then, and so be it. Don't, don't be too hard on yourself for not having it done it, done it more quickly. 
um, you know, we're all kind of humans. In, in Beautiful, America. vulnerable advice. You know, I think if you're doing something that hasn't been done before, then of course things are not going to go as planned. And I see a lot of people freeze up at that point. I've messed up. I suck. Oh man, I refuse to give myself closure. I'm going to be really tough on myself because that's the way I'm going to learn. But you've already learned. You feel the pain you've already learned. That's how you burn yourself in a stove. Oh, I'm not doing that again, right? So the beautiful part is I bet those things felt really big back then. But every one of those mistakes, every one of those learnings that you made are all folded into what's launching tomorrow. And it makes you better and better every time. So it's almost like it's a gift, really. And you have to, but you have to forgive yourself because if you don't, then other people can feel your sort of lack of empathy towards yourself and it affects your mood and it affects your ability to lead, affects your clarity. So it's beautiful, mature advice. It's almost like younger entrepreneurs are like, oh, I, I, I couldn't possibly forgive myself because now I'm being weak or I'm not actually, you know, capitalizing on the pain. Yeah, no, it's, um, no, thank you. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough for everybody out there, you know, when you're trying to, to do that. But, but again, that's also why, well, you know, my initial point is to also make, take the time to celebrate when you do have those, those wins, no matter how small they are. So it keeps, it keeps you uh, going, you know, you, you've got a certain amount of, everyone's got a certain amount of grit, I guess, inside. You've got to refill, refill your, 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 your jar. Grit or jar. You know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. I've never heard that before. You're right. You're right. Like grit is, depletable and you do that by celebrating by forgiving by you know other you know self-care and that's uh that's great time with fam fantastic wow everybody thank you so much co-founder head of studio for blowfish studios and producer of the upcoming amazing launch of phantom galaxies everybody check out the show notes and jump right in thank you very much ben really appreciate it Thank you, Rich. Thanks for your time, too. That's awesome. That was Ben Lee, ladies and germs. Wowie kazowie. I mean it. This AAA RPG launch, early access of Phantom Galaxies is going to be a seminal event. Please, CLS, comment, like, subscribe down below and join us for more Founder Insights podcast by Animoca Brands coming up soon. Thank you. This podcast is for information purposes only and should not be considered as financial advice. Any opinions provided in this podcast reflect the views of the speakers only.